you're buying a home in Florida, you may be wondering how a hurricane might impact your real estate transaction. Since we just had Hurricane Ian come through Florida, I figured this might be something we should talk about. Hi everyone, I'm Kim Devlin with the Kim Devlin Team in St. Augustine, Florida. If you've never been here before, my channel is all about the places, the neighborhoods, and of course real estate in St. Augustine and the surrounding areas. So give it a like, subscribe, and why not share it with a friend? Before moving to Florida, you should consider the potential of a hurricane, tropical storm, or other major weather event that may impact not only the process of your purchase, but also the integrity of the property. The first thing to keep in mind is that while a natural disaster can hit any home in any area, practically any time, we do have a routine hurricane season from June 1st through November 30th. This is a pretty wide range, but we typically see the worst of any storms around September. So if you are flexible in your timeline for moving, you might want to plan your home search outside of the hurricane season. But if you are working within the season, don't worry. Florida real estate law takes into consideration the possibility of a natural event causing disruption. And all contracts include provisions to protect you in the case that the property is damaged during the transaction period. One of the most popular contracts we use here in Northeast Florida is the as is contract. So I'm going to share some of those clauses in that contract that pertain to these potential casualties. The first one is force majeure. Force majeure is defined as an event that cannot be reasonably anticipated or controlled. In real estate, this can include extreme weather like hurricanes, an act of war or terrorism, or any unpreventable disruption of routine business. This now also includes epidemics, pandemics, and government shutdowns. In the as-is contract, this clause first comes into play as an automatic extension to contingencies and deadlines when a dramatic event prevents a party's performance or closing from happening. Once the clause is triggered, certain time periods within your contract, such as inspection, financing, and the closing date, will be extended for a reasonable amount of time up to seven days after the force majeure event no longer prevents the performance of the contract. A key provision in this clause to pay attention to is the timeline to the closing date. In the event this clause takes effect, either party may terminate the contract by delivering a written notice if force majeure continues to prevent performance of the contract for more than 30 days beyond the original closing date. The second protection clause is risk of loss. If the property is damaged by fire, hurricane, or other casualty, the risk of loss clause goes into effect and describes the rights and obligations of each party. Whereas force majeure provides the guidelines for timing, the risk of loss clause deals more with the funds and responsibilities to take action. For example, if the property is damaged and the cost to restore the property does not exceed 1.5% of the purchase price, then the cost is the seller's obligation. In an event like a hurricane, this could include the cost to prune or remove damaged trees, remediation for water intrusion, and repair roof damage. If the restoration isn't complete prior to closing, the seller is obligated to escrow a sum equal to 125% of the estimated cost to complete the restoration or repair. But if the cost of restoration exceeds 1.5% of the purchase price, then the buyer has the option to either take the property as is along with that 1.5% of the purchase price or cancel the contract altogether, thereby releasing both the buyer and the seller from all further obligations. If the buyer chooses to terminate the contract, they would receive a full refund of their escrow deposit. If the buyer does not exercise the right to cancel within the prescribed time frame, the clause assumes that they will continue with the purchase. Do note though that other contracts may vary on the prescribed timeframes or budgets. In a NEFAR contract, for example, the risk of loss restoration budget is up to 3% of the purchase price. It's important for you to understand as a home buyer that there are protections in place on your purchase contract, especially if you're buying in an area that has routine natural events like hurricanes, wildfires, and earthquakes. If you have any concerns about the possibility of force majeure or risk of loss, ask your realtor before you sign anything to explain those clauses in the contract to you. And of course, if you are purchasing a home in Northeast Florida and need some assistance, feel free to reach out to me at any time. And for more on the lifestyle market and all things Northeast Florida, check out my next videos. And don't forget to subscribe to stay in the loop. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will catch you on the next one.